Hello. What is it about foods production in Nigeria that needs to be addressed? You will find out as we open another session of news, views, and analysis. Good evening and welcome to Weekend File. Fruits constitute important aspect of agricultural production in Nigeria as they ensure food sufficiency as well as income for rural farmers. But market supply chain of fruits is short, which means that the products are sold near production sites or local markets, leaving abundant harvest to perish for lack of adequate storage and processing for both local and export markets. There are various elements in a value chain for fruits that could create enabling environment for stakeholders to function. Absence of these elements obstructs the flow of production from uh, products uh, from producers to the consumer. According to the Agricultural Fresh Produce Growers and Exporters Association of Nigeria, between 55 and 72 percent of fresh produce grown in the country perish before they can be consumed, mainly due to lack of access to finance, trade agreements, and relevant laws needed to assist farmers have access to markets both within and outside the country. Experts say that the industrial potential of many fruits available in Nigeria is enormous. Their industrial uses can stimulate large-scale production that will attract siting of massive production plants in the rural areas where the fruits are largely produced. Currently, there is low level of investments in the processing of fruits like mangoes, pineapple, strawberry, avocado, watermelon, purple, and others, and uh, small farmers are the worst hit, followed by medium and light scale farmers who are forced to sell their orchards to pre-harvest contractors. Now, let's interrogate all of this tonight on the program, and our guest is uh, Dr. Victor Iyama, National President, uh, Federation Agricultural uh, Commodity Association, with me, uh, who will be in our Lagos studios for our conversation. Now, thank you for joining us. I am Kirian Umayo, and we are on to Weekend File, and the news comes first. <laughs> Now, more than 150 graduates, including the fiscally challenged, have been granted automatic employment and scholarship up to doctoral level in any Nigerian university. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo announced this at the end of the President's National Youth Service Corps Awards Ceremony in Abuja. State House correspondent Chide Onifade reports. Six months into my service here. I had a gas explosion. That altered a lot of things about my life. For almost 10 minutes, silence falls on the whole as three of the 15 physically challenged ex NYSC members in a documentary narrate their involvement in road and domestic accidents that led to their conditions. I sustained a spinal cord injury. The sadness was, however, short lived as the whole burst into life again when Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo delivers the President's message to the youth. But it, but it is a greater lesson to all of us that whatever the setbacks that we may experience in life, it is to be used as a stepping stone. And for the awardees comprising winners of 2015, 2016, and 2017 batches, the Vice President has this to say. To all of today's honorees, let me make it clear that you are not just the future of our country, but you are also its present. You must all see yourselves as the leaders that you are. But leadership, as you know, comes with responsibility and continual sacrifice. We will continue to identify with and support initiatives that seek to promote excellence and hard work among young people. This has been clearly demonstrated through the provision of the required resources for the mobilization of all eligible graduates in spite of the economic situation of the country. Some of the awardees and parents described the program as moral booster. 
And I want to thank the president and the federal government very much because this is the way to go to encourage and motivate um, young ones and the coming generation to, to do similar things. Tell you I was thinking in Nigeria, if you don't have a godfather, you will never get there. But I have now seen that with good work and dedication, you can actually get to the top. It was a privilege serving the nation and a thing of joy to get honored today. It's a mark of the fact that even the nation has a way of recognizing and being grateful and thereby encouraging even the younger people to get committed. Among the dignitaries is former head of state, Yakubu Gawain, who started the NYC program from the banquet hall of the State House. Jude Onifadi, NT News. Permanent secretaries have been urged to cons be conscientious in their duties to ensure delivery of quality services to Nigerians. Head of Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyo Ita, said this at the 2019 Permanent Secretary's Retreat in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria, at Debola Brooklyn Sunday reports. Project development, especially those that are infrastructure uh, being provided by governments at all levels for the benefits of our citizens. It is, however, observed that lack of required skills and techniques to execute these projects have resulted into some being abandoned. Those who are enlightened. How to effectively end the challenge dominated discuss among the key players. His Excellency, Mr. President, came in and inherited abandoned projects close to about 30 to 40 years uh, of abandonment and he would not take the excuse that uh, it's of lack of funds or this or that and he has therefore given a, a matching orders to the cabinet uh, to make sure that these projects are you know resuscitated especially those projects that will help the socio-economic development of, uh, of this country the need for effective communication guidelines was also raised it's important that we we'll bring down the precepts, break down the themes, break down the changing principles and procedures for better, more productive and effective communication. Digital procurement is the way out for two reasons. One, efficiency and two, removal of human interference as much as possible. Participants are expected to put into practice skills acquired at the retreat for smooth and quick project execution in the country. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Former Nigeria's permanent representative to the United Nations, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, says Nigeria's march to greatness would be quicker if political leaders and their followers ensure that all public policies are fully implemented. The former diplomat made the remark at the presentation of a book in honor of a retiring professor of political science, Professor Sam Amdi. Labude Arewa reports. Since independence, successive governments have tried to formulate public policies towards the nation's development. However, political science experts at this book launch say that the fourth implementation of such policies is an offshoot of the absence of committed leadership. The book titled Public Policy and National Development in Nigeria is a collection of essays which profile solutions to Nigeria's socio-economic challenges. While Professor Ibrahim Gambari wants the leaders to lead by example, former Information Minister Professor Jerry Ghana sees Nigeria's diverse languages and cultures as a source of our strengths. One is that you have to have policy based on facts, not sentiments. So therefore, those of you who are creating ideas, promoting ideas, disseminating ideas, don't give up. The book itself is what we need now. The, the celebrant, Professor Sam Amdi, is quite pleased with the opportunity to mentor generations of students who are now honoring him. Rarely in this country we have policy analysts. The problem has to do with implementation of the policies through made. Professor Sam Amdi lectured in political science for many years in Abuja or Labo Darewa, NTA News.
Nigeria is soon to benefit from Saudi Arabia's aggressive oil sector investments across the globe. Areas of interest will cover revamping existing refineries, building of a brand new refinery, LNG investments and product supply, trading in crude and refined products. Correspondent Lydia Samson reports that Minister of Energy, Industry and Mineral Resources of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Khalid bin Abdulaziz Al Fali, also hinted at the possibility of establishing an independent refinery in Nigeria as the country considers Nigeria as the best hub to reach other African countries. For his part, Nigeria's Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Emmanuel Ibe Kachiku, expressed expectation that the signing of the MOU will further cement the cordial relationship between the two countries. He explained that the visit to Saudi Arabia became necessary because of Saudi's success in the oil and gas sector. Mr. Kachiku further applauded the cooperation between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia at the highest global level of OPEC. The minister led a high power delegation drawn from the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Department of Petroleum Resources, Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, and Petroleum Equalization Fund for a visit to the oil rich nation. Saudi's Vision 2030 is to position Saudi Arabia to become global leaders in the areas of mining, energy, logistics, and industry. To attain self-reliance in the production of firepower equipment needs, the Nigerian army is resourcing or sourcing for one billion naira to commence full manufacturing of combat vehicles. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Toko Bulatai, disclosed this at a firepower demonstration to mark the end of the first quarter. Chief of Army Staff Conference and the Combat Arms Week in Jaji, Kaduna State, Defense Correspondent Ismail Musa has that report. Firepower demonstration is a critical component of the military training as it showcases the synergy between the infantry and the armor corps, the maneuver arm of the army. The event provided an avenue to test run this mine detector and an armor personnel carrier produced locally with the capacity to resist up to 12,000 tons of mines. Females in the Nigerian army were not left out of this combat exercise. This multipurpose bulldozer and this armored personnel carrier are manned by personnel of the newly established Women Corps. The elated army chief stressed that the formation is developing capacity to produce its needed soft and hardware. But in the next three, four months, we should have our brand new vehicles originally produced by the Nigerian Army for Nigerian Army and indeed other services and the general public. We are already sourcing. We have a number of investments in the Nigerian Army that is generating huge amount of money and we'll take a loan from there. To it is worthy to commend Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mahmoud Bahari, for providing the visionary leadership and logistics needed to transform the Nigerian Army. The event also featured the display of selected arms and combat vehicles, some produced by the Nigerian Army Vehicle Manufacturing Company, situated here in Kaduna State. From Jaji in Kaduna State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. In the meantime, correspondent Najatu Tijani also reports that uh, the Nigerian Air Force has equally held activities such as exhibitions, open lectures, competitions, and awards of excellence on indigenous technology development initiatives. This is in continuation of activities commemorating its 55th anniversary. Known for defending the territorial airspace of Nigeria with its superior air power, the Nigerian Air Force is also big on promoting indigenous technology, which is being displayed at this exhibition by various research and development units of the armed forces and private sector partners. So don't panic, it's not a spider, it's actually called Mechamed. It's a mechanized camware used for surveillance and this is the sort of technology that the Nigerian Air Force is promoting. 
Mechamed and other innovations from military research and development are crucial to the integrity of Made in Nigeria technologies with federal government's backing. We should be able to provide for our local needs, even to arm our armed forces and provide for the logistics that are required for our strategic engagement. One thing that is missing is private sector participation. That we must get. Award of excellence to best innovations will be done during the grand finale of NAF at 55. Meanwhile, open lectures focusing on building capability while responding to national security were held at the NAF Conference Center with an obligation by the Nigerian Air Force in consonance with sister services to counter security challenges by identifying gaps in operations. Of improving air to ground integration for the efficient and effective projection of air power in enhancing air ground integration for an overall improved response to national security challenges. More activities lined up for the Nigerian Air Force at 55 celebration include an interdenominational service, Naja'a Tutijani, NTA News. Uh, thank you, Najal, too. As Gwembe State government imposes a 15 our coffee in the state capital. The remains of the nine members of the Boys and Girls Brigade who died on Easter Monday tragedy in Gumbe State have been laid to rest. Correspondent Emmanuel Akila tells us more. A solemn assemblage of mourners at the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan Center Gumbi, to pay last respect to the departed members of the Boys and Girls Brigade. Nine corpses departed Gumbe State Specialist Hospital and arrived at the Cannes Center for the final internment. <laughs> After the special parade by the brigade as an honor to the departed colleagues, the clergy took over and performed a brief prayer and exhortation, and then the departure to the cemetery. A massive grave of nine chambers was ready to receive the visitors into their final resting place. The brigade's commander read out the names of the deceased members as their bodies are being lowered into the grave. Christians are peace-loving people. And uh, uh, like Jesus said, when he was returning to the Father, he said, my peace. I give unto you, no less the world give it. We are peace loving people and we want to call on all the Christian community in the state to continue as peace loving people. Adamu Abubakar and the only person he was driving the car with were lynched at the scene by the angry members of the brigade. To avoid any breakdown of law and order, the Gombe State government has imposed a curfew on Gombe metropolis and environs in Gombe. Emmanuel Akila, NTA News. All right, now the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has commenced identification, verification, and registration of farmers affected by the 2018 flood and victims of farmers' headers crisis under the Emergency Agricultural Intervention Program. Eliasu Ali Yakubu reports that the exercise is sequel to the approval of the 33 billion naira by President Muhammad Buhari for the compensation. The devastating effects of 2018 flood disaster on farmers has left 244,892.56 hectares of farmlands washed away, thereby threatening food security across the country. 232,989 farmers were affected by the disaster. Upon approval of the funds for the provision of farm inputs and livestock for the seven conflict inflicted states with 10 billion naira emergency intervention fund and 23 billion naira to 14 flood inflicted states. The verification exercise is ongoing simultaneously in all the affected states to ensure early distribution of the intervention fund. NTN has visited rivers, Bielsa, Delta and Anambra State where affected farmers converge on various communities for the exercise. I want to say a very big thank you to Mr. President. If the government can provide us with 
working materials, particularly like rotavators. I thank the president for this timely intervention. And we are very grateful to Mr. President and of course to the NEMA crew. The State Emergency Management Agency and the Minister of Agri have been collaborating, cooperating and supporting us. And everything will be going smoothly. From Asaba in Delta State, Iliasu Aliaku, NTA News. Teach the internally displaced persons how to catch fish and cater for themselves. That's the message uh, the Federal Commissioner, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Sadia Omar Farouk, is sending to governments and other corporate organizations. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports that the Commissioner is optimistic that this will enable the displaced persons get back on their feet. With nostalgia and heartwarming rendition, the event kick off as the IDPs remember the ancestors with whom. <laughs> The one-week training on tie and dye and soap making with the end products, which are daily essential commodities of every home, will go a long way to turn around the fortunes of the trainees, as they could not earn a living through their labor rather than waiting for handouts from good Samaritans. I will start doing this uh, tie and dyeing to help myself, to help my children going to school, and I'm not waiting for somebody to come and give me. I'm capable to do to produce a soap. And I will, I will not depend on people, I will depend on myself in order to, uh, to make it and sell it and also to train the people. We want to try our best to continue do the business so that we can help ourselves. This intervention in Abuja is one among 31 skill acquisition training programs for IDPs in nine states of the Federation to make them self-reliant and employer of labor as efforts are underway to return them to their original homes by the authority. We are teaching them skills so that they can be on their feet. The best way you can uh, help people is to empower them so that they can fend for themselves. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed, NT News. To ensure peaceful and seamless transition of government in Oyo State, President of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, Nigeria Sin, has urged members to close ranks and avoid any action capable of disrupting peaceful coexistence in the state. He said this while addressing members in a battle. Rafia Animasho reports. The leadership of the National Union of Road Transport Workers met with members of the union and the state to map out ways to address the lingering crisis within the union and the state. The president emphasized the need for members and relevant stakeholders to see themselves as one and work for the peace and progress of the union. They should avoid anything that can tarnish the image of the organization and work hand in hand with the incoming administration in Oyo State. Earlier, the president of the union paid a visit to the governor of Oyo State, Abiola Jumobi, and the governor-elect, Shegi Makinde, who was received by the deputy governor-elect to appreciate their support for the union and the state and solicit for further collaboration for sustained peace. We just operate within the law. And I'm glad to say that Alaji Yassin and his executive stopped to her. They obeyed the law. We don't want to rank us, uh situation we are cutlasses, guns, all those things will be used. It's enough in other states. The president prayed for peaceful coexistence of all and sundry in the society. In Ibadan, Rofia Animation Batmos, NTA News. Uh, for Africa to witness meaningful development, the potentialities of culture to promote socio-economic emancipation and empowerment of the people cannot be overemphasized. This was the submission of discussants at the 2019 African Drum Festival Roundtable Conference held in at the Uluma Rock at Mohamed Adebawale tells us about it. From time immemorial, the drum has not only been a musical instrument, but a means of communication. It has become an integral part of the African society, as there are specific drums that convey different moods from war to peace, mourning to celebration and royalty. 
realizing the immense growth and benefits of the drum in the socio-economic growth of the state and the country at large, a roundtable conference, which is part of activities lined up for the African Drum Festival, brought together professionals in art and culture, traditional rulers, executive council members, and representatives of some state governors. How do we transfer the culture of drumming to the generations born and the unborn? Governor Ibikunda Muson is the convener of the roundtable conference. We have a nice all these different talks here. And it will be like uh, some kind of dialogue for us that we can even use. So now we can keep this in our own Other activities continued at the newly built amphitheater of the Civic Center in Abelkuta, Mohamed Adebo Ali, NT News. As the nation strives to achieve true democracy, virtues such as honor and patriotism should be the watchword of Nigerians. This was re echoed in the sermon delivered at the Synod of the Anglican Diocese, Wakulada Abuja. Daniel Adaria reports that the event also doubled as an award presentation. It was a gathering of Christian faithfuls in Abuja, not for a gospel outreach program as one would expect but to acknowledge and appreciate deserving personalities and individuals who have shown exemplary and impeccable character in society. The Nigerian Television Authority was among the awardees and the conveners of the event say the NTA deserves commendation for its effort in producing and airing quality news reportage and programming while also promoting peaceful coexistence and unity of Nigeria. <laughs> Bishop of the Anglican Diocese, Gwagwalada Moses Tabwai, noted that the essence of the award was to encourage and spur well many Nigerians who have remained resilient and committed in adding value to the growth of society, stressing that, irrespective of religious or ethnic differences, Nigerians must promote peace and eschew evil. NT is the voice of the voiceless. The reason why people today are finding it very difficult to live in harmony is because there is no love. We need peace for us to have monumental development in Nigeria and in Africa. Other recipients include entrepreneurs, media practitioners and non-government organizations. In Abuja, Daniel Adirie, NT News. Thank you, Daniel. You are watching Weekend File. Now, production of fruits is a key agricultural activity and has far-reaching and important economic role in Nigeria. You will learn more in our correspondence report up ahead. Don't go away. When we first met, the first question I asked was, Where have you been all my life? Since then, we have taken every step together. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed having a pillar of support. So, actually. <laughs> Especially when the kids were schooling abroad. Oh, how we made it through those years. We've grown together. And we really wouldn't have come this far alone. <laughs> History is amazing when we share the same passion, the same drive, yes, and the same vision to succeed. Everything is so smooth. No drama, no stress, no story. In fact, we're practically family. Let's help you achieve your visions and aspirations, milestone by milestone. FCMB. 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 My bank and I. In today's world, it's tough being a woman. But thanks to So Clean, Nigeria's number one detergent with stain magnet technology, doing washing is a whole lot faster and smarter too. Only SoClean has stain magnet technology with an advanced enzyme formula that pulls out even the toughest trap dirt, just like powerful magnets. No wonder Nigerians love SoClean. SoClean, for a faster, brighter, cleaner wash. From our wonderful family, Meet Patty, for celebrating the high points of life with friends. And then there's me. Jolly Jolly, bringing nourishment to every gathering.
packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. And the reporter just uh, reaching us, uh, President Muhammad Buhari has again expressed deep sorrow in a message to the families and friends of the slain members of the Boys and Girls Brigade in Gwembe State at their funeral today. Nine of the youths being buried were killed following a dispute between members of the brigade and a security operative while on a procession to mark Easter. He, however, urged them to be consoled by the fact that the entire nation is with the families as they experience this sad, indescribable loss. At the same time, President Buhari has expressed shock hearing reports of tensions in the state capital leading to the imposition of a curfew by the local authorities and directed security agencies in the state to ensure that vigilance is maintained. Now we thank you for staying with us up to this moment on Weekend File. And uh, let's begin uh, this segment with the reports uh, from our correspondents. Undoubtedly, Benue State is the leading producer of mangoes and oranges in the country. To leverage this potential, key players have to deal with issues of faulty processes and lack of prerequisite, uh, requisite support uh, to export their yields. Gordon in Nalegu reports on efforts to overcome these challenges. Benue State has suitable soil and climatic conditions that enhance the production of mangoes and oranges. Statistics have shown that of the 12 varieties of mangoes in the world, Benue State has 10 of the species. In some parts of the state, mangoes and oranges are valuable throughout the year. The peak of production and availability of the fruits is a where they are produced in abundance. However, infestation of the fruits before harvest because of faulty farming practice and post-harvest losses are some of the challenges farmers face every year. Azape Priscilla and Msu Giado are sellers of both fruits at the railway market in Makudi. They, however, decried the losses they suffer due to lack of processing and preservation facilities in the state. If a baby will get a company to keep those things, if it will uh, gland this thing and keep it inside uh, something to stay, all those loss, we don't, we for no meaty loss like that. Stakeholders, however, say for the fruits to be expected, they must have good global good agricultural practices certification, processing and preservative measures, as well as packaging. These things are, need some preservative uh, period, so that at least after harvesting, they, it's a shared period. It's a period within which they can stay and somebody who can still use it. If we must export fruits and vegetables, Nigeria has to have a national global gas certification process. They explained that the above measures will go a long way in minimizing losses and enhancing the economy. In Makudi, Godwin, in Alegu, NTA News. Kogi State prides itself as one of the highest producers of cashew in the country. But as Solomon Ayede found out in this report, this potential is far from being realized as value addition to the national economy. Kogi State is one of the largest producers of cashew in Nigeria, contributing more than 100 metric tons out of the total 220 metric tons exported out of the country. Annually, the potentials of cashew stakeholders believed is underutilized in the state. Lately, the volume of cashew production has shrunk, leading to reduction in income to government. Experts 
attribute the challenge to low quality of cashew products as well as knowledge gap on the part of farmers. They should allow their cashew not to mature before harvesting. Then after harvesting, they should some dry the cashew. If we have a kind of cashew intervention fund that some banks are gazetted to take care of handling the, all the transactions within, we will be giant of Africa by our doings as well. Other measures include engagement of consultants to help train farmers, marketers, and Ministry of Agriculture staff. More importantly, they advocated the establishment of cashew processing factories in the state. Presently, the federal government eh, is establishing uh, cashew processing factories in the state of the country, of which Bogi State is, is one of, the, of them. State Commissioner for Agriculture. Ken De Olon Utoba, who spoke off camera, said the ministry is working very hard to implement the state government's mandate of increasing annual cashew production from 100,000 metric tons to 200,000 metric tons by 2024. In Lokoja, Solomon Ayedehi for Weekend File. Coconut is one of the heritages of Badagri in Lagos. It is one of the products that the early Portuguese settlers brought to the town in the 17th century. Since then, coconut has become an agricultural product uh, that the people now explore for enormous benefits. Tunde Saiki reports on the spin-off benefits of coconut and challenges in harnessing them. And challenges in Coconut is a farm product that the people of Badagri say has over 1,000 benefits to mankind. An average sized coconut tree takes up to 7 years before it grows to fruiting stage and produces up to over 20 nuts at a time. The cost of a bag of 40 pieces of coconut goes for 2,700 naira on a good Agbalata market day and more on any other day in Badagri. Coconut business in Badagri is viable in the sense that People come from far and near, even from the north, Sokoto, Kaduna, far, far, far away. On the coconut market day, when you get to the depot there, you see a series of large vehicles filled with coconut. A matured coconut is good for oil, while the fresh ones from the water side is good for rice, bread, and pleasure, as well as medicinal. As I will see coconut, the water of the coconut, this cash, and the bulb where they, they remove it inside, everything are money. Some people are grind it, maybe in a mosquito coil in the drum, or maybe another thing we don't. When we grind coconut, oil will come out there. Then they take coconut do the bread. The business of coconut in Badagri has suffered some challenges, such as bad roads and lack of interested industries to take advantage of the large volume of the product in the area. First of all, I told you, say, motto did there. Now, if you go which two times a day, that's the, that work, that, the, work the, the end of that will be there. Because, road no good. The local manufacturers of the coconut oil say it takes less than a week to produce a 10 kilogram of oil with an average of between 800 to 1,000 coconuts to get. They argue that if interested industrialists take advantage of the large quantity of the product in the Badagri area, the coconut oil demand will be met. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTN News. Hibiscus or Zobo drink is increasingly gaining ground as a sought-after food drink, basically for its alleged medicinal properties. It is produced from hibiscus flour, also known as Zobo. Zobo production in Jigawa State is now attracting investors. In this next report, Hawa Haliru Haruna tells us that the state government is considering establishing a quarantine center for value addition. Jigawa State is blessed with abundant land, with almost every plant being cultivable in the state. Little wonder, hibiscus popularly known as Zobo is being grown in commercial quantity in the state. Statistics from the State Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources confirms that 15,000 farmers grow hibiscus in their farmlands. Hibiscus farmers reveals a success story with majority expressing happiness on the way its farming is boosting their economy. 
The farmers, however, want more support from government, like opening up direct market, especially as they now relate with middlemen who exploit them to their advantage. For the past 25 years, I have been planting hibiscus. Every farming season, I get 40 to 50 bags of hibiscus. But if there is low rainfall, I get 15 to 19 bags. Our only problem is fertilizer. We want government to be giving us fertilizer directly. Going forward, the state government says it's not unaware of the booming market of hibiscus plant and it's working with relevant stakeholders to make it an exportable. In terms of uh, national figures, we are talking of hundreds of uh, uh, millions of US dollars that is accruing to the economy of Nigeria. Agriculturalists agree on the need for government to accord special attention to hibiscus farming because of its value for money. From Duzi, Hawa Halara Haruna, NTA News. Uh, thank you indeed, Hawa. You are watching Weekend File, and today we are exploring the export potential of Nigerian foods. And as we informed you earlier, our guest tonight is uh, Dr. Victor Yama, National President, Federation of Agricultural Commodity Association, and he'll be reaching us from our Lagos studios. Stay with us as we'll be back in a short while. Data. We can't live without it. Share it. Impress with it. Borrow it. Oxygen. Jennifer, don't tell me you're still looking for chapters for your expo. What expo? I'm reading to pass. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I beg, we all know even if you study, the surest way to graduate in this school. That to do a ritual. <laughs> or better still, we hook the lecturers, Abby. <laughs> no. That's a thing of the past. I would not get a certificate I cannot defend. I would not be a burden to the nation or the society by fixing or buying certificates. That does not add value to my life. This is the era of change, and change begins with me. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. And uh, joining me now from our Lagos studio is uh, Dr. Victor uh, Iyama, National President of Federation of uh, Agricultural Commodity Association. Uh, thank you, Dr. Iyama, for joining us uh, this evening on Weekend File. Thank you for having me. Uh, doctor, recently, um, studies carried out by the Food Organization, uh, Food and Agricultural Organization, shows that uh, Nigeria is leading other African countries in fruits and vegetables production. But the name Nigeria is uh, nowhere to be found in the global market of fruits and vegetables. What is responsible for this? Well, uh, primarily, first of all, we should know that um, 
a lot of our fruits and vegetables are being consumed in this country. And also a lot of it go, go because of uh, preservation, go to waste. We lose a lot of these things. And moreover, for us to ship fruits and vegetables, we need regular cargo. We cannot start shipping fruits and vegetables with um, regular containers by sea. It has to be by air, preferably refrigerated uh, air containers. We were working on it some years back with uh, one of the former ministers of aviation, but unfortunately she left. Uh, the present minister of agri is also working on it now. There are some things that must be put in place before we'll be able to compete because there are some countries where that, that is their mainstay of their economy. But be that as it may, I think um, we should do more of trying to add value to our fruits, especially to process it, try and get uh, some uh, small scale uh, processing machines especially at the farm gates and all that. Those are the things because, um, like you rightly said or somebody mentioned, 60% of our vegetables and fruits go to waste. That is basically our problem. We need to, and, and moreover, when you talk of preservatives, how do you really preserve things? We had suggested before that uh, maybe in some zones, regions, or states, we could have some uh, mini gamma irradiation uh, uh, machines, which uh, if they run all these things through it, it may be able to preserve it for about six months. It's an expensive machine, but I believe uh, with efforts from both private sector and government, it can be put in some strategic locations. That is basically what is uh, happening. It's not as if our fruit, though some people will also tell you that uh, standardization and all that. But the truth is, we have all the bodies to check whatever we're shipping out of this country. So I strongly still believe that it is basically infrastructure deficiency. That is what is affecting our ability to ship our fruits and vegetables. The inefficiency in infrastructure. You just mentioned the uh, gamma irrigation uh, machines. I, I, I'm sure that there is one here in Abuja at uh, Jeddah uh, Science uh, uh, Establishment, which I've also uh, seen uh, uh, once or twice. And uh, for, for you, you, you said that uh, if, if, you, if we can have that at strategic strategic places in the country that will serve. It's a very expensive machine, uh, as far as I can understand. Now, you are talking about shipping these fruits. Is it raw or processed? Is your organization more interested in, in exporting the raw fruits, or are you interested in processing them to add value before they can be exported? We're interested in both because um, we cover all the value chain from production to processing to marketing to export and all that. We're interested in all the value chains. But the truth is this. Of course we want to process because if you add more value, you are supposed to get uh, more money. How do you add more value when you don't even have the comparative advantage of cheap sources of energy. Because at times that's part of what affects us. By the time you want to really process, you will discover that by the time you process, it is better for you to even sell locally because you make more money than when you ship because you won't be able to compete. If by the time what they are producing for one dollar overseas, you end up producing it for two dollars, will you be able to sell? So, but all, all the same, we still need to continue to process until we get that veritable advantage. I've always said, the key problem we have in this country is energy problem. If we solve that problem, you will be shocked. Nigerians are very enterprising. Both the youths, they are very enterprising. But in a situation where you see them, 
you process, you do your computation, and three quarters of the many have gone into purchases of diesel. So how do you compete internationally? That's our basic problem. But in all honesty, if the government can concentrate on solving that problem, you will see the way Nigeria will grow astronomically. We are there. We have all the potentials to be leaders, not only in Africa, but in the world. So we must face that problem. I ask you this uh, final question uh, on this edition of, of the program. The, today's government is interested in, in agriculture, and uh, uh, a quantum leap you know, has been recorded in this area. Now, would the organization suggest to government you know, to take steps you know, to ensure uh, that uh, some of the uh, infrastructure you mentioned could be provided? You, you talked about uh, gamma irrigation. Uh, do you have that channel you know, to reach the government uh, with this concern? Yes, we have. We have. We, we, we've been uh, talking about it because, uh, like I rightly know, there's only one in Abuja. Do you expect uh, the farmer in Sokoto or Kebi to, to take his onions, for example, and load it in trailers and come to Abuja to, 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 to queue and all that? No. That's what we're saying. See, there are some things, sacrifices has to be made for us to move forward. They are the, we don't, we are not saying those gigantic uh, edifices in Abuja should be built all over the places. No, there are some smaller units that can be invested in. That is what we're saying. It, it, it's for our own goods. Moreover, one of the things I forgot to mention on uh, export of uh, our perishable goods. Look at what is happening at our ports. Can you load your container, even if you want to take that risk, even refrigerated container, and go and be on the road for almost three weeks, four weeks before the, the people have been shouting the roads. Yes, the road is a problem, but the major problem are the terminals at the ports. There are a whole lot of things that we have to do to, to, to be a, a serious exporting country. There's a whole lot of things. Somebody was talking of coconut. Of course, coconut is a gold mine yet untapped. Coconut alone can provide employment for over 20 million Nigerians. Uh, 26 states of this country can produce coconut. Right now, it is mainly Lagos and Aquaibo. And um, that is one area, that's a gold mine we're sitting on, you know. So we've made all these presentations. We have over 45 different agricultural commodities that, that can be tapped into that will bring in the needed dollars in this country. But we'll get there, I believe. This government is very serious about agriculture, no doubt. Very, very serious. But I keep saying, they have to also be more serious with provision of, especially, energy, electricity. All right, uh, Dr. Victor Yama, we would like to appreciate your comments this evening on this program. Thank you indeed for your time. Um, uh, Dr. Victor Yama is the National President of the Federation of Agricultural Commodity Association of Nigeria. It is uh, my pleasure hosting you this evening. Next, sports. The Chief of Army Staffs, Lieutenant General Tukuru Yusuf Buratar, on behalf of officers and soldiers of the Bajan Army, regrets to announce the death of the former Chief of Army Staff, Major General David Akpode Ejo, which sad event occurred on the 10th February 2019, aged 87 years. Funeral arrangements, Monday, 29th April 2019, service of songs and nights of tributes at Avila Event Center, Victoria Island, Lagos, time 5 p.m. Thursday, 2nd May 2019, service of songs at Sacred Heart Catholic Cathedral, Awari Sapele Road. Friday, 3rd May 2019, funeral service at his residence. Interment fellows immediately after service. Sunday, 5th May 2019, Thanksgiving service at St. Joseph Catholic Church. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Colonel Segir Musa, 